All right, so we just had some really, really crazy stuff happen last night. That same chick is back. Our intern here was up having a really nice evening with his wife at a public restaurant here locally, which shall remain nameless, when somehow the beast spotted him. She was hungry. She was hungry for drama, and she was hungry for a man's nuggets. Okay, so you saw her again. She found that you were, what, your car was parked? How did she even know you were in there? I, I don't know. I assume because from what I've been told by some of my other friends and stuff that have been hanging out in the area that she's been kind of watching the store. Um, my car's got a private sector arm sticker right on the back. I mean, it's very apparent. It's a private sector arm sticker, Glock sticker. You know, from what we've been told and what we've seen, um, my wife caught, thought, saw her multiple times over the last week hanging out over at the uh, Safeway uh, gas station that's about a block, block and a quarter from here to direct line of sight to our parking lot. And basically just seen her overall occupying this area around the store. Huh. Um, we've had yeah. Her, we've had I mean, her. the customers that were coming in over the last couple of days, one of them was like, oh, hey, I saw your best friend over in Safeway. It looked like she was following me around. The next one was like, yeah, I was downtown walking around uh, just a few minutes ago, and I thought I saw her downtown on the same side of the sidewalk. And the, all these people, the one thing they have in common is when they were telling us the stories of when, they were all wearing our shirts at the mm -hmm. time. Yep. So, yeah, it seems to me like she's stalking us. If she can't let it go, she must have fell in love or something. Yeah, must have. Yeah, so anyway, she see, you guys are sitting there eating at Wendy's, right? Well, what happened was we, we ordered our food. They takes a couple minutes for them to make the food, so we get our one drink. We go, we sit down. Me and my wife are chit-chatting. It's, it's fairly busy. And then I notice them bagging our food. We're eating in. At that point, I notice this big black shadow off over here in my peripheral vision. And I look, and there it is. And it's already got its cell phone out, and she's trying to verbally accost me. She's getting verbally aggressive with me. Oh, look at this big guy type of thing. And then so at that point, I just kind of look at her and just go, just leave us alone. You know, we don't want to deal with this. So we grab our two. So you recognize it right off the bat. Oh, right off the bat, I could identify that face anywhere. How many other people can identify that face anywhere? I don't know, probably a million or more. Uh, yeah, that's what the numbers say. That's the numbers say. So me and my wife take our two trays. We go back to our table. We sit down, and it follows us to our table. Mind you, I sit in a position where I've, I could see my car. I have my back to a couple of windows. Now, care for that, but. I'd rather be able to see my entrance. Sure. And then so she comes up and like my table's like right here. She stands right here. And she's talking shit, talking shit. What is she saying? I don't even remember because I was trying to ignore her. I was doing my very best to ignore her and have a good meal. But I stab, stab, yeah, well, obviously you can't have a good meal if somebody's standing right at your table. Yeah. So she was right at your table, like yeah. she's engaging you in conversation. Yeah. Okay, and so you're ignoring her. At what time did you actually start... Um, what time did you uh, call 911? What is it that she did that made you go, okay, I need to, I need to call 911 immediately? She reached down, said something to me, and grabbed a bunch of my chicken nuggets and stuffed them in her mouth. She ate your food? Yes, she ate my food. Man, don't you know the rule? Never touch another man's fries! Exactly. Or nuggets or whatever. Nuggets. I trust I try not to touch another man's nuggets. That's for sure. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So anyway, what else did she do? So she does that, and at that point, I pull out my phone, and I unlock it. She goes, oh, a Glock background? You're definitely a big man, aren't you? And at that point, I'm like, you know what? Just leave us alone, or I'm going to call the cops. And at that point, she's like, just do it. Just call the cops type of thing. So I just hit 911, hit dial. She continues to accost me there in the store, and I make the decision because there's a couple of families eating. I'm just going to disengage. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to call the cops. They'll arrive. They'll handle it. Um, so I get up, I go to head outside, and she follows me outside. Okay, now, you got plenty of witnesses from the employees that are there I, that I this hope, lady is doing that and I that she so. followed you out, right? I mean, there's people there. Yeah, there, there, yeah right? there, there was a lobby. There was at least five people in line. There was a family of four with two babies sitting there eating. Right. But you did, did you notice specifically that the employees that worked there saw her harassing you and followed out the dish. She was oh, making I, that I, much of a... Oh, I can guarantee yeah. you they did because when I was up at the counter interacting with them, I was, you know, standing at the counter with my food in front of me. She was here. She was like, I could feel her 
here. Gotcha. So it wasn't to the point where she was making contact, but you know, you can but, feel you know, the heat you got a taste of her, You got a taste of her body heat. Yes. That's gross. Yep. Okay, so, I, so then. I head outside, and so I'm kind of walking around in the parking lot saying, hey, you know, this is who I am. This is where we are. Of course, 911's asking for the address, and I'm like, I don't know. We're the Wendy's on Harrison Ave in Olympia. I mean, there's only one. I need officers here now. You know, I'm an intern at private sector. <clears throat> we had this person come in, she did this. She's now accosting me here. Mm -hmm. uh, I am armed, because I'm always armed. So we need an officer here before she gets physical because she's escalating. Right. And so while I'm on the phone with dispatch trying to get officers there, my wife follows her out. She continues to yell things at me. She's got her phone recording. At one point she starts kicking the back of my car. Like, because, a, like what part of the car? Uh, right on my bumper. She scuffed it a couple little times yeah. because, I mean, if you remember, remember watching the other Antifa video, she couldn't even get the Bible on the roof. Right, yeah. How's she going to tempt my car? Right, right. So she puts the boots, so to speak, yeah. to your bumper. Yeah, she, puts her, she tries to put her shit kickers to my, uh, mm -hmm. to my bumper and only manages to scuff it. So law enforcement eventually does arrive. Um, after she does try to engage with my wife, I tell my wife, just go inside. Because I don't want my wife in a situation right. where this person attacks my wife. Because at that point, I'm going to protect my wife. Right. That's, and so. And that individual is actually, even though you're you you are not a small guy, she's bigger than you. Oh, she is bigger than me. She's got an inch on me as far as height, and maybe a hundred pounds. Yeah. I mean, she's she's big. And right. so law enforcement arrive. The the as as they pull up. I, I pull my shirt over my sidearm so that it's open, and I place my hands like this because I'm agitated. It's apparent I'm agitated, but I want to show the officer I'm not a threat. Well, the one officer starts yelling at me through her windshield to stop. Okay, so that, was that the first officer on the scene? Yes. Well, they came up in one, two, three. All three cars were in a okay. chain. Gotcha. And she, but the first one to approach you was Officer, do you know her name? I can't remember her name. She's about this short female, um, said that she was here at the other incident. Okay, well, we never had any female um, officers come into the place of business. She might have been, they might have called her out there once yeah. they determined that that was a female outside. So I, I guess she never came in, so I never yeah. saw her. But anyway, so then she says to you. Um, basically, um, you know, tells me to calm down. And I'm like, you know, this crazy person is stalking us, doing this, that, and the other thing. At a bare minimum, it's harassment. And she goes, well, look up the RCW for harassment. She's not harassing you guys. And then I go, and then so I, I pull it up, and I look at the RCW, and I point out three subsections in it where she is committing harassment, mm -hmm. where she is showing intent of violence against me, and where she's doing it verbally, which is Washington's definition of harassment. Mm -hmm. And then I then pull up the stalking RCW, and I show where the top three of the main five things for stalking where she is doing that to our store. And the officer looks at me and goes, well, because you guys haven't been calling the cops because you guys have been seeing her in the area, well, there's nothing we're going to do about it. You and just called the cops because she was seen in the area. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, so totally denying yeah. the yeah. situation that's going on right then and yep. there. Okay. And then, so when I ask her about, well, she took my food, what are you guys going to do about that? And, She's like, well, it's under, you know, $50, so we're not going to do anything type of thing. So okay. at this point... What I, about scuffing my car? Nope. They weren't going to do anything about that either. So they, they determined that there was not disorderly conduct oh, because yeah. of the... What was the, well, what was the reason? That, Why? Well, I could get to that in a minute when I talk to the second okay. officer. I get an explanation on what disorderly conduct in the, is from them. So at this point, I get pissed with her. And I'm like, you know what? Screw this. You guys aren't going to do anything. I'm done dealing with you. I am too pissed off to talk to you. You're not giving me respect. I'm going to go grab my food and I'm going. I'm done. I am going home. I'm taking my toys and going home. So I start to walk away and she goes, stop or I'm going to detain you. And I'm like, what? So at that point I stop and look at her and go, I'm going to talk to one of the other guys. Go send one of them over. And so she sends over one of the officers. Um... Officer Adam Allison. Um, he comes up. He was one of the officers that came here to the shop when she showed up the first time. The one that I believe he said that we're treating this as a non-crime or something along those lines. So I end up talking to him. He remembers the incident. I tell him what's going on. And he says, yeah, well, there's nothing we can do. And I ask him, you know, what about putting her on a psych hold? Because it's apparently she's mentally unstable. 
And he's like, well, in order to put her on a psych hold, we have to propose that she is a danger to herself or others. And I go, well, what about attempted suicide by civilian? And he kind of looks at me like, what? I never thought of that. I never even heard of that. And I go, yeah, so what's to stop some crazy person from going after somebody they know is armed with the intent of getting that person to shoot them? Yeah, and when she did that here, uh, we actually had several people uh, in authority, uh, I guess, present that point of view that maybe that's what she was trying to do was get a reaction or maybe she was trying to commit death by arms dealer. Mm -hmm. You know, same basic principle. People get shot robbing the deal. She came in here and picked up that fake gun and pointed it in my face. Uh, maybe she thought she was going to try to incite something, but mm -hmm. clearly I knew it was plastic. Yep. All right, then? So I then explained that to the officer. And so he's <laughs> like, yeah, I'm still not going to do anything about this. So I then, okay. So she comes into our store at first point. She levels this resin rifle on my store manager. And he goes, well, Don never told me that happened. And upon further review of the previous video, Don did. He let him full well know that she leveled the resin rifle, so Oli PD lied about that. And then he also said that Don didn't want to press charges, which I edited the video. I know Don asked him about pressing charges. So now I have Oli PD, and particularly Officer Adam Allison, no, sorry, yeah, Adam Allison, uh, who had then lied to my face about what my manager had told me. Right. Um, which. And didn't the female um, officer ask you, how did you know that it was her? Oh, you yes. weren't even there. Yes, yes. At one point, the female officer goes, how do you know that was her? You weren't even there. And I looked right at her and go, because I'm our media guy. I edited the video. I watched that video over a hundred times editing it. I know her face. What they do? So they let her go? They let her go. Um, they told me that if we wanted to try to do anything about it, what we had to do as a store and as individuals was to go and get a no contact anti-harassment order through the civil courts. Before I know they take about three weeks for them to deliver them. So that gives her three weeks grace to do whatever she wants. And then after she gets those, if she comes in within range of us, then, then she'll be arrested. He tells me because she has been occupying this area to not go to restaurants in this area, that I shouldn't shop in this area. I work for two companies within a block of this store and I live within a quarter mile of this store. I walk to private sector arms every other So because day. you're the one that's getting accosted and they refuse to do anything about it, you're the one that's got to move. You're the one that's got to find another exactly. job. You're the one that's got to do anything else. Mm -hmm. Because I'm the victim and she's the crazy Antifa I have to go away. Uh, I'm Mike Peoples. I uh, work next door to Private Sector Arms at uh, uh, Baskin Robbins 31 Flavors. And you're the connecting store retail front right next to us. We share the same right. wall, right? We share, we share a back wall. Okay, so knowing that we had an actual um, incident here the other day, and this individual was trespassed from the whole premises, anywhere associated with it. You've read the trespass decree already. Parking lot, any training, right. anything. Yeah. You saw her the day that she was there. In fact, yep. in fact, what do you remember the story that you told me yeah. about a little so item? I, what was I, that? I remember her walking in front of our store after she dealt with Don and the police at his shop, and she she reaches down her pants and pulls a, a drumstick, like for a drum set, a drumstick out of her pants after this event, and then. Um, yeah, last night I see her. I see her in the shop again. Um, apparently, after this trespass order had already been put through. Right, and then last night she goes and attacks Devin and his wife at a Wendy's. Yeah. Right. The cops deal with that. They say no crime. Once again, it's a non-crime. Yeah. And then they tell him that I didn't even want to press charges, which is an absolute fallacy. I mean, you saw the video. Oh, you were yeah, there when yeah. it when it happened, right? Yeah. You know that I was wanting to press charges, 100%. and they were refusing to press charges. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So, once again, last night, they attacked one of the employees here, one of the interns specifically, and his wife while eating at Wendy's. And then after that, and the cops dealt with her and let her go again, yep. she came back here to our lot yep. and then decided to peruse your business, business next door. Next door. Before last night, under RCW 31100, we would have to observe her in the parking lot to, uh, in order to go through with the trespass. So even if we can approve to you that she was here, and we have witnesses to say so, 
as she come here scoping out the joint, we still, there's nothing we can do unless you guys are there and physically see her do it. Yes. Okay, and that's your, that's your official stance on the whole thing? Yes. Okay, uh, anything else? Anything else, uh, any advice you could give us on, uh, you know? If, if she returns, then you got to No, 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 she's already returned. We're already no, past that, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, we're past the, her returning. So, so now that we can't do anything about it, what can we do about it? We have to observe her on the property. I can't just go off of, of that. Like I said before. You can't another business who she proselytized their business. No. I cannot. Uh, go by word of mouth on whether or not they're on uh, the property. Okay, so if you guys get here after she breaks it and then she leaves, th the same thing. So we, we, there's no protection for us is what you're saying. Yeah. So if she gets here, if she gets here and then she decides that she's going to leave even after we've called you, and by the time you guys get here, she's no longer here, then you will not be enforcing this here trespass warning. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, and uh, can I ask you one more uh, question? Did you uh, did you tell my uh, uh, did you tell my intern here, Devin, that I did not want to press charges, and that's why you did not arrest her or do anything at the time when she threw those uh, Bibles at the store? When we when we were discussing, you said you would rather just trespass at the moment. No, what I asked you is, I said, what if any laws did she break here, and you told me none. And I said, really? So there's not actually any kind of a misdemeanor thing? What are we doing? Are we treating this as a non-crime? And you go, yeah, we're treating it as a non-crime. So, so I, the, nowhere, nowhere there did I say don't arrest her or don't do anything. You're the one that told me there was a non-crime. No crime had been uh, committed. And you actually told me that before your partner even knew that those were our Bibles. So you guys made that decision before you even knew that it was our property that she did that with. So that, that's kind of strange to me, but, but it's, what's even more strange is that there's nothing that we can do about it and you won't take our word for it or a sworn witness statement, which seems absolutely ridiculous. But since that is your policy, and since you all do, you do, uh, you do quote the RCWs, can you actually give us a number on that so I can take a look and do all that? RCW 103100 is called arrest without a warrant. I would have to observe her on the property. Okay, according to that, arrest without warrant, you'd have to observe her on the property. Yes. Okay. Trespass, trespass is not covered under 1031-100, which gives me the authority to make an arrest without a warrant and without seeing it. Okay, so the RCW doesn't cover trespass, yeah. but the RCW allows you to commit arrest without a warrant, but not in the case of a trespass. No. Okay. All right, that actually means something different than what I thought you were saying. So I'm glad you uh, straightened that out for me. Yeah, of course. Okay, I think that's all we need for now. Thank you uh, very much for answering our questions and uh, letting us kind of vent a little bit. Oh, okay. and the one, the one thing I need is I need the case number from last night. So when I go to get the restraining order. There, there was no case number pulled last night because there was no, no case written. Um, I mean, she stole my property. I stood there and told you guys she stole my property, and I still have I not... Provided, last night, I, I provided you with my card and then the incident number. No, you didn't. There's no incident number. That's what we need is an incident number. Can we get that? Because also, uh, me, since she, me, since she kicked the... Let me see if sure. I can look back at it. Since she kicked the uh, car and stuff like that, the insurance wants the incident number. One seven three three four zero six seven six. Awesome, and that's an incident number, not a case number. Yeah, that is what we call a police event number or incident number. Okay, so that must have been a little bit of the confusion when we were asking for a case number then, incident number. Awesome.